Hey folks, um, today it's about Clap, the new Clap plugin format and UHE and Bitwig Studio officially announced Clap yesterday on their websites. And uh, I link in the description below so you can read everything if you want to. And also a link to KVR where UHE posted um, beta versions of their synthesizers, which you can try out now in Bitwig beta version six uh, in the new Clap format. So here we are in Bitwig Studio Beta 6 and I can load here Hive by UHE. This is how it looks like. And you just saw here, um, maybe let's go to Diva. Um, you can see we have now here this small little clap symbol. As you can see, Diva here is also available in VST3 with these small little three um, dashes here. Um, so yeah, this is how it looks like in, in Bitwig Studio. So we can load up Clap here. And with this new Clap format, we have some new possibilities inside Bitwig Studio available now. There are some features missing in the implementation right now because it's everything is in beta, uh, but you can still try it out. So also um, these plugins here by UHE are in beta versions. So um, they have some problems. There are also some debugging mechanisms implemented. So sometimes it crashes or it hangs, but this is kind of intended. Um, at least that's what it what I read in the forum post. Um, so now with this uh, clap format, we can modulate here some parameters polyphonic. So maybe just in it here patch, we have a sawtooth and we create here some, uh, some notes. So ju just start here with one note. Or maybe I got it go to D sharp. <laughs> um, so now we can modulate here, maybe the cutoff, or we can just move the cutoff knob here, which is um, nothing special. Uh, but we can use now here a random modulator. And these random modulators inside Bitwig Studio are polyphonic by default, right? We can also switch this here to uh, Bipolar, so it goes in the positive and negative range. And we can also smooth here the um, modulation itself. And we maybe go to eight nodes, we can see what's going on. So when we touch here a parameter inside the hive, turn this here up and down, you can see it also moves to, to the top part of this device container. Yes, yeah, so we can easily modulate now here the cutoff knob and just hit play. Peak limiting. So nothing special really. Um, but now we can add more notes to that here. So we have now here uh, four notes. And yeah, each of these notes gets now its own random value for the modulation. So you can see on these dots. So each dot represents basically a voice and each voice gets its own modulation value to this knob, to this cutoff knob. And if you did do this here a bit more subtle, then yeah, it brings the sound to life basically. So now we can just duplicate here this random modulator and maybe modulate the panning of this first oscillator, right? So we touch here panning, modulate this here. And then we go to node. So each time we press a node, a random value is generated and then we hold this value. So every time we have a node on it, on with the notes here, we generate a random value and this random value then transmit the value to this panning position. I go to this. So every time I press play, you can see we have a different value here, which represents basically the panning position. You can also make this move around, maybe a bit slower, maybe four bars. slow okay 
Okay, so now we can also dial in a unison, of course, 16, 16 voices. So each node gets 16 voices of unison. Little bit of detuning, vibrate a little bit. Maybe bring here also um, a sign. And sub. And maybe you switch it to wavetable so we can move the wavetable position. So I'm using here formants, um, talk box maybe. So we can switch her through the wavetable. And because this is now polyphonic, each note, each voice gets its own wavetable position, which is really nice. So move this here, bipolar off because we start at zero and we want only to modulate in the positive uh, range. Positive, uh, positive, positive values. And as you can see now, also with clap format, it's, it's now possible that you can move or offset these knobs without disturbing the modulation itself. I think before that we had a state for just one knob position. This knob position was also moved by maybe the automation and also the modulation. And now it's all separate. So you have can offset the cutoff knob. On top of that, you have the modulation and then maybe also the automation, if I'm not wrong. So you have multiple states inside the plugin for each of these individual um, knob position modifiers. That's actually better, better down here. Maybe it's too fast. Ah, this one here. So slowly moving through the wavetable. Maybe we put in here some FX uh, chorus reverb. Oh, yeah. So I kind of like this, how it is. Um, so we have also the panning here, of course, moving around, which is nice. Maybe you can modulate here also the vibrator a bit. Maybe take this one here, duplicate this. Just a touch. Now, if you're on my left side, I have an MPE controller, um, and I think Hive 2 is also capable of um, using MPE. Um, but you can also now use just the expression modulator of Bitwig Studio for this. And we have here the timbre, which is basically the position on the key of my finger, uh, up or down. Uh, so it's, I think it's Y, the Y axis. So we can use this here also to hmm, maybe open up here the cutoff a bit more. And because this is now polyphonic, you can 
yeah, press multiple keys on your MPE keyboard, slide up or down with each finger differently and open up the cutoff for each note you press differently. It brings everything to life, of course, because it's for each voice differently and it sounds very organic. Um, so this is basically two or three features of the new clap format. There are more um, features, of course, that are more behind the scenes. So it's uh, easier for clap developers to uh, bring metadata, metadata to the host itself. So for instance, if you develop a sampler or something like this, you can communicate which kind of samples are actually loaded in the sampler to the host, to your DAW, and the DAW then can grab these or take these samples and put it into the project folder to the right path. So you can communicate better with the host. And also some CPU multi-core um, performance things are also implemented. I couldn't des test these yet uh, because I just downloaded this yesterday and played around a bit. But I wanted to show you that it's actually uh, worth trying out. Um, the links to these beta versions are in the description below. Also, all the information about CLAP. And if you are interested in developing CLAP plugins, there are also links in the description below where you can download some frameworks and some, um, yeah, some basic information on how to develop these things. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Try it out. Give me some feedback if you tried it out already. If you have, if you have some fun with this um, new clap format, let me know. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and uh, bye.